Hello and welcome to the Ultimate Strategy Podcast, your go-to podcast for everything strategy. Each week we'll share a new episode covering a wide range of topics designed to help your business grow smarter by making strategy both approachable and actionable. I am Miriam Lesa, Strategy Execution Director here at Cascade. And I'm Laura Blackmore, Head of Strategy Execution. Hi everyone, we're excited to have you with us today. This is just the beginning, so stay tuned for weekly episodes. Before we dive in, let me thank today's sponsor, Cascade. Cascade is the number one strategy execution platform. They help turn visions into reality by working as the strategic brain of your organization. Thousands of top businesses around the world use Cascade to plan, execute, and track their strategies in one place, improving efficiency and speeding up decision-making. By successfully executing their strategies, Cascade customers are making a real difference, from deploying life-saving vaccines to engineering the fastest Formula One car. If you want to get your team moving towards your vision in one central platform, check out Cascade at www.cascade.app, and we'll leave the link in the episode notes. Now, let's get started. So today's episode, we are going to be talking about how to be more strategic, I don't know about you, but this is something that I heard really early on in my career. I think, you know, I'm thinking back to the early 20s, getting that feedback, you must be more strategic, you must be more strategic if you want to level up in your career. And I remember thinking, what does that mean? And Googling and not really finding the answers. So today we are going to be tackling that topic and hopefully leave you with some insights to be more strategic in your business. Miriam, tell me about your experience. Do you feel the same way? Did you get that feedback early on in your career? I, I didn't get per, per the exact same feedback. Um, but you know what? I was actually when I was still, um, I think I was probably just in my early years of studying and university. And I started to get really into strategy, get fascinated with it. And I read those old like books, like about warrior strategies, like where strategy comes from. And it only took me, it took me a while to actually make the connection of um, what they did back then and how it translates to, how it translates to today and to strategy. Um, but uh, I, I saw it very early in my career. I feel like I saw those leaders that were really strategic and I, th I saw the ones who were just really in the weeds all the time. And I was always thinking like, oh, it's like so it feels like so refreshing and inspiring to work with the leaders who are more strategic. So I felt always like very much drawn to these type of people, probably hoping to become one of them myself one day. But I'm curious, like, how, what did you do? How did you become more strategic, Laura? Yeah, it's a great question. I'm thinking back, probably the most pivotal, pivotal moment for me was I had an amazing leader who, you know, it was kind of really simple, but I think there were two main essence, I think, of what really elevated my strategic thinking. One was really getting behind the vision of the organization and being super, super clear on where the business was heading and what those major levers were going to be to grow the business. What were the North Star metrics? I've typically only worked in uh, revenue generating businesses. I've never worked for a not-for-profit. So for me, getting behind what are those levers? Is it you know, generating revenue? Is it getting more sales? Is it getting more customers? Is it acquisitions? Is it uh, renewal revenue? What what it What is it that the business is really striving towards and what's going to really help them grow? So I think getting super clear on that and really understanding the long-term vision, so not what we were looking to do that quarter. Again, I've really only worked for tech businesses. So a lot of tech businesses operate on a quarterly mindset. But again, for me, it's like, what are they trying to achieve in five to 10 years? Um, really helped me to anchor my work around this, the super long-term vision. I think the second thing, which is something I'm very passionate about still now is getting super clear on my personal goals and those around me. So really helping my teammates, my leader to write super, super clear goals for that team, for the business. Um, and again, thinking both short-term and, and long-term, but I think one of the easiest things you can do to become more strategic is make sure that you have clear goals. And I'm not talking about the tactics or the projects or the initiatives of like what you're trying to achieve this week, but it's really, if you were to hit that project this week, what does it ultimately then 
help you meet as an objective? And what outcome or what metric will the business start to benefit from when you do that project? And I think something that's always stuck with me um, or something that I, I learned back then as well, um, possibly from the same leader, I can't quite remember, but I think one of the biggest lessons I learned was always make sure you're working on really impactful revenue generating activities and the activities that you're working on that aren't generating revenue or that aren't making an impact on the metrics, forget about them. Or at least try and do very little. We've all got admin to do. But at the end of the day, if you're doing a lot of those activities, 80% of the time, you're already only making 20% of the impact on the business. Whereas if you can strip as much of that admin or, or you know, silly little work out of the way and really focus on the revenue generating activity, that's where you can make a huge difference. And I honestly think that's what helped me elevate in my career. Yeah, I love that. I think it's like, that is like really also for me, how I started to probably establish that more strategic mindset is um, having more of that vision. And um, for me, it really started, um, I think I was always very curious about it and like interested in it. And I always chose roles in strategy, but I don't actually think I truly knew what it means early in my career, <laughs> as we just don't know, I guess. Um, I think for me, it really fell into places in, in my um, past role where it, they had a really, really clear vision, it's a big um, sports or like world white um, sports organization, they had a really compelling vision. And seeing that every day and all the time and feeling not only connected to the vision, but then understanding how the leaders come and um, put it together into that strategic plan. It's like, wow, they're like truly like taking the vision, breaking it down in this powerful way. And you felt like I felt like how every employee just felt so connected to it. And that that's where it clicked for me. I'm like, that's how true like vision and strategy needs to come together and how people actually feel it and live it every day. Um, so ever since I, I'm like a big believer that this is needed to make also people feeling more fulfilled. And I think that's also when it started for me to be more like, well, what is my personal vision? What is What are my personal goals, right? Because the one thing is what we do in our job, but the other thing is really also... What, what is it that we are striving for in our own lives? What is our goal and what do we want and where do we want to go to? And it's, I think what's at the end of the day, what's the purpose exactly? Like, what is it like? I feel like so much is just like to help you focus, right? Like, I think as you get older, you just also figure out like what you don't want to do. And yeah. <laughs> in an organization, I guess you don't have all the years to wait <laughs> till the organization gets more mature you just have to figure out what do you not need to do what is it that you focus on and creating that is i think it's so so powerful and yeah um yeah what, what do you think um um like when did it click for you to create like your own like um purpose and and focus as well i think definitely the purpose i think came a little bit later on but i think maybe something that or a way that I always tell others to go and find the purpose is you do kind of need to get that broad perspective first. You need to kind of get some diverse thinking from the people around you, both inside the business and outside the business that you work at, looking at sort of the industry that you work in and maybe looking at competitors or maybe even looking at how other teams operate it, it to then in order be able to create your own path as well. I think it's really hard to find your purpose if you are kind of siloed in your thinking or if you're siloed inside your organization, I think where it really starts to, the puzzle really starts to come together is when you can bring all of those things together. So I think for me, yeah, definitely getting a bit of a broad perspective, um, really learning from others. I've always had a mentor that is outside the business that I work in. And I think it's really important to get that external thinking as well. Um, I would also always recommend to surround yourself by really strategic thinkers. And again, that's kind of hard to paint a picture of what that really means, but you want to be surrounded by people who can think strategically and not always think with emotion. Um, so for example, you know, if you've got a, a business decision to make and you have very little time, if you jump on it really quickly or you make a rash decision, sometimes it can be really beneficial to take just a few moments, a few seconds, a few minutes to 
compose yourself before making that decision. And I think empathy also plays a huge part in that. I think for me, I've always been drawn to empathetic, strategic, smart people um, because that's kind of the vibe that I want and I want to absorb that from them. But I think being able to be empathetic whilst also making bold decisions is a great uh, is a great balance to get, I think. Yeah, totally. Um, I love that you bring up to be empathetic because I think that's that's ultimately the key to be truly strategic, to sort of feeling out not only what people around you think, but also step like almost like putting on all these different hats and put yourself into all the different perspectives and maybe even into perspectives like obvious for customer, but maybe also just of your future customer and what like just stepping a little bit out of that hamster wheel. And I find like, um, well, for myself, but also just for a lot of leaders that I see that might have gotten to that level of a more of a role where more strategic work is required from them, they have a hard time to let go of that uh, more executional piece because it's easier to grab, right? You can hold on to it. It's like more action driven. It's like more practical. You can do something every day and you see immediate results versus like when you step out of it and you put yourself more into that strategic mindset, which does require the space, the time that you probably have to schedule in your diary then really the magic happens, but you have to allow for the space and for the the other perspectives to come in. For me personally, actually, like um, I'm a I'm a I'm a big yogi as well, and um, a lot of my um, thinking came just even just like from studying yoga philosophy and um, making connections on levels that might not be very obvious um, in the beginning. But you just start putting things into perspective and you draw these parallels and all of a sudden you see things in a different perspective and it just allows for a lot more creativity, which I find is another really big like trade off strategic leaders to bring in the creativity. And that only happens with creating that space, as you said as well. But like, how do you mm -hmm. create this space? Like if we're having listeners out there who are maybe uh, more... Um, on that management level, like mid management, and they're expected to create those strategic plans. Like, how do you like? What's what would be your advice to create more space in your life and in your work to actually take on that strategic thinking? Yeah, I think it's. I think moving from, like you said, a kind of individual contributor or somebody who's deep in the execution to then leading a team who's executing is honestly the hardest shift or, uh, you know, kind of migration that you do in your career. I think one of the, the biggest advice that I can give is to create this or create the space, but don't feel guilty for creating the space. So create time in your diary to allow the thinking, whether that be on a walk or doing yoga or wherever you are that you have your thoughts and not feeling guilty that you're not strapped to your desk or in a team meeting. I think it's a really, you know, kind of easy thing to say, but I think creating that space for thinking is very different than when you're an individual contributor and you're executing and you're like, you know, deep in, in project work and you're doing things. So I think having the space for that and not feeling guilty is is quite an important piece. But I think also get it, spending time getting to know the strategy. So like I mentioned at the beginning, getting to understand the vision, the North Star metrics, really getting to know that intimately and detailed enough that you can recite it to your team and when you have somebody straying off the path or, or working on things that don't really matter, you can bring them back to that vision and, and talk about the importance and you can recite that really easily. And then I think finally is like not overcomplicating your own team strategy or your personal strategy, depending on the size of your team, et cetera, but really not overcomplicating it. The amount of times I've seen pages and pages of strategies that are super complicated. My biggest feedback to anybody writing a strategy is, write it as if you were showing it to someone who's not in your business and they could read it and go, oh, okay, you're working on this, you're working on that, it's going to make this impact, you're going to measure it in this way and like here's a couple of projects you're going to deliver by next quarter. So writing it as if it's in like kind of layman's terms, um, which is definitely easier said than done, but I think a lot of the time it gets overcomplicated with fancy words and jargon and really lengthy objectives. You should be able to know what your objectives are without reading them from the paper. Um, and if you can't, you probably have too many. Yeah, so, so true. One other thing I would also say what I find is 
um, people hesitate sometimes to do, and I even see it with myself, <laughs> is delegating. It's simply saying no to tasks that might not serve you or that keep you maybe from thinking more strategically or being more strategically. Delegating the tasks to your team members, um, having the trust that they can do that, and with that, creating the space. But like saying no is very, very important as well. And at the same time, you can empower your own team, which uh, which gives the team so much more of a good feeling as well and feeling valued, empowering the team. And you can create that space. And um, I, I've seen, I've, I've worked with many leaders who who were very controlling. And I've also worked with leaders, leaders who were like very much hands off and like very trusting. And even like in my own role, when I was like um, leading a team, it's like finding that balance between your like tendency to still want to kind of control and know it, but then also being like off, hands off and trusting. Um, it's not easy. It like it take, takes practice. I think that's the other thing I would say. Give yourself some grace. It's never like um, it's a journey, right, to become more strategic. It takes time. It's just mm -hmm. I think at the, at the end of the day, becoming more strategic or having a more strategic mindset is almost just like maturing as a leader at the end of the day as well and, and growing yeah. as a leader. But it takes time. It's it's not it's never happening overnight. Yeah, I think as well, you said something uh, interesting there, like kind of maturing yourself as a leader, but I think also maturing yourself as a person. And I think mm -hmm. getting, getting, uh, what's, what's the, the word, word I'm looking for? Like getting comfortable with your intuition and trusting your guts and being able to make instinctual decisions rather than emotional decisions. I think that for me is also that kind of emotional hurdle that you that you overcome in order to be a strategic thinker. And some of the best strategic thinkers that I've seen are the ones that uh, don't lead with that emotion, but they can tap into the emotion when they need, but it's not using that emotion to lead them. Who do you, do you have somebody in mind of like your top of the list strategic thing? I do. Um, and I, for me, I, I like to read biographies and I like to read about um, amazing people in the world <laughs> or people who have been like doing amazing things as well. And I like to learn from their stories and from their path. Um, I think what, what was the most impressive one for me is Nelson Mandela. I've been to South Africa, like visiting lots of places where he's been and that's just been a story that has like um kind of been really like stuck with me because it's like having a perspective and having a vision in a situation that is definitely not um favorable for you in any way but still having not only on a personal level that vision but having that vision for your country um i think that's like obviously exceptional and it's like a unique case but it's also just something that motivates at the end of the day and like seeing people like that, those are the change makers in the world in many, many ways. Yeah. Do you that. have someone in mind? I think for me, it would be someone super inspirational early in my career. And that's Cheryl Sandberg. She wrote the book Lean In uh, about women, uh, work and the will to lead. And I think the book was definitely, it definitely inspired me on how to be a leader, but also it talks about kind of that strategic thinking and empowerment and encouraging uh, people. And I think for her, the vision, her vision is to be in a world where everybody's voice is heard. So that one, that would be it for me. I love that. Yeah. And I mean, there are so many great inspirational leaders out there today. And I think like you can follow so many, um, but it's also good to just like pick what works for you, right? And and who is an inspirational leader for you? I want to like demystify one other thing that I feel like oftentimes, um, and you touched on it a little bit earlier. Oftentimes, I feel like it gets confused when you have to be more strategic. Oftentimes, they say like, "Oh, you have to be like this super critical thinker," and it's like very data driven and this and that, and making really data driven decisions. That's coming up a lot, and I don't want to like um, a discount making data driven decisions. Um, but at the same time, I find um, from my experience, um, as a strategic thinker, you cannot rely on data, especially not in the beginning when you're off to an up to something. I see like the most strategic thinkers, they're coming up with those hypotheses that are probably not even like um, backed by any data at the time. But it's like 
putting all the different perspectives together and seeing something that somebody else, that nobody else sees. And maybe there is an influence of data in it as well, but also a lot of creativity. And again, like, that's why I always like to say strategy is like a mix of art and science because it's not like <clears throat> super straightforward all the time. So um, I would always say like as well, like I find the most um, inspirational strategic thinkers they use their intuition more so than anything. And oftentimes it is backed by data, but not all the time. And then stepping up and still using your intuition. Um, when I've seen people doing that, that's where the magic usually happens. I don't know if you've had an example in your career where you saw anything like that um, as well, or, or what's your experience with data versus intuition? Yeah, I think you're right. It is a perfect blend of the two. I was also thinking actually while you were talking about um, this idea that in order to be more of a more of a strategic person that you have to be super assertive and bold and mean. <laughs> and I think that's also something that I've seen in the past is actually the best leaders, the best strategic thinkers, the ones that make great good decisions, but also have the data at their fingertips and can analyze it and back it up are not the most assertive and loudest people in the room. Um, and I think we've also seen that out with uh, major companies, you know, some of the best leaders who, you know, almost predict and see things before the average person uh, are also responsible for the fastest growing or the, you know, the biggest revenue generating businesses as well. Yeah, I think um, let's wrap it up with our key takeaways and announce the next subject. So in terms of our key takeaways, I think going right back to the beginning, we had talking about that long-term vision, setting clear goals, making sure that you define what that long-term success looks like, thinking beyond the immediate. Um, what else would you, would you sum up from today's talk? Yeah, definitely, as you said, like creating that longer-term vision. I think the second point would be... Um, creating a space for yourself to uh, think more strategically, whether it's making uh, those uh, entries in your diary or delegate more, whatever that may be. And maybe the third element could be uh, or would be for me to um, uh, add in new perspectives as well. And um, whether that's help from outside or uh, or just different perspectives, even from other industries, can be like so, so beneficial and so valuable to help be more strategic. So what's our next uh, subject that's coming up for next week? Our topic would be creating a culture that supports strategy execution. And we're very, very excited to talk more about that and talk a little bit more about culture and strategy. Also a super exciting topic. That wraps up today's episode on how to be more strategic. Hopefully you found it insightful and that it helps you on your journey to better strategy execution. I think uh, in the meantime, before next week, don't forget to subscribe to the Ultimate Strategy Podcast on your favorite platform so you never miss an episode. Check out the links to the resources we mentioned. And a big thank you to our sponsor, Cascade, for making this podcast happen. And thanks for listening. And remember, great strategies are only as good as their execution. So take action, make it happen, and see the results. See you in the next episode for your weekly dose of strategy. Bye. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.